Were you, or were you not, on a gay cruise? <laughs> Now you're 120 percent dictated. Everybody that age, they're sperminator. Yeah, because we don't care about anything else. We're a walking hard on looking for a hole. That's. <laughs> uh, I have to say you're right on that one. Oh my god! A stiff breeze comes through the room, and you return the favor. Gunner in. Oh. <laughs> Somewhere on the outside of this building, there is a hole where squirrels come in. Trying better to than a hole where dicks come in. Yeah, better than that. <laughs> Going down the stairs to wash the laundry. What the hell? Shh. Pizza, pizza. Stop! Stop it now! I order you to stop! I'm still touching myself. <laughs> Yeah! All young bitches want to do is pop pills, smoke weed, get drunk, lay around, suck dick, eat hot Cheetos, charge their phone, get a sew and weave, twerk, be bisexual, eat McDonald's, wash their pussy in the sink, lie, take selfies, <laughs> And talk shit through Wi-Fi because they phone never on. I think washing they pussy in the sink is my favorite part. (laughs) (laughs) The Vietnamese trade in dongs. Figuratively and literally, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, I, I did decide to look it up. 500,000 dongs is a good night for Pops X. <laughs> like most women, oh. he's an emotional thinker. Good. God. I mean, that's part of the problem we're having now in, in our society is we have a bunch of emotional thinkers that want the world to, you know, to fall in line with their emotions. <laughs> it's not. Uh, look, reality doesn't give a shit about no. emotions. It's my lived truth. Fuck your lived truth. No, it's not. It's your perspective. Kiss my ass. Literally, like, hey, Sarm Pop, you got to turn your bear suit. I'm like, over my dead body. No. Just give me a statement of charges. Yeah. You're never getting yeah. this back. Yeah. You can suck it. I'm going to wear this with my Russian baggage coat. <laughs> you, you will bury me in this. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Why got to fucking be like that, man? Because I'm an asshole, and I learned from the best. I'm sitting across from him, and I'm pointing at you with all four fingers. <laughs> all right, first of all, the Russian jacket. Is World War II surplus? I'll send you a picture of it, Sarge. Yeah, okay. Well, I got you standing new- wearing it with holding two giant buckets, like you just collected all the chum from behind the dump dumpster at the bar bar, and you're gonna go home and make ice cream out of it. <laughs> It's 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Do you know where your anal glands are? My cat just shot me in the face with anal gland discharge, and I'm not being dramatic at all when I tell you that I don't think I'm ever going to fucking recover from this. It hit me in the mouth. It hit me in the fucking mouth, dude. It all happened so fast. I was laying in bed watching TikToks. She hopped up onto the bed. She got on my fiance's side of the bed. My fiance is allergic to her. So I tried to push her off of my fiance's side of the bed and her butthole was facing me. And as I pushed her, this white stuff shot out of her. Raising. And I felt something touch my lip. 
it touched my lip and I ran to the bathroom and I washed my entire face with antibacterial soap four times in a row and it still doesn't feel like I'm clean. And luckily it didn't get in my hair, but it got all over our pillowcases and all over the headboard of our bed. And it is the most I have that effect foul smell I have ever come across in my entire life. It doesn't smell like poop even. It smells like ass. It smells like ass. <laughs> and I was a CNA. I've had people piss on me, shit on me, bleed on me. If it comes out of the body, it's gotten on me. And this is still the grossest thing that has ever happened to me in my entire fucking life. <laughs> Welcome to Grunt Speak, live from the lair. <laughs> uh, Gleep Glop, Floop De Doo, and Digital Dave in the uh, hills. Oh, yeah. And I got some Guinness because I've earned it. It's been a long week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm a little off today because I received a text message that uh, has an order attached to it that I think is uh, they're ramping up for the ww123 and it's basically an alarac from the dod authorizing lottie dotty everybody up until 40 to get called back into active duty well this is their last play um yeah the, 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 the persecutorial i'm i'm sorry prosecutorial uh, stuff against trump isn't working he's leading trump he's leading biden in every single poll especially in battleground states he's losing in general polling he's dragging the democrats down ballot down with him so now you have to have a wartime president you don't want to switch leadership during a period of war wing mm -hmm. so you're talking about lawfare which is failing yes it, it is failing spectacularly well and aoc didn't help matters the other day by insisting that rico wasn't a crime mm-hmm when what is Trump being prosecuted for in Georgia? Listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. What I was watching that, and she's like, what, did you see him do a cry? Did you see? And literally, I'm like, we all have. I'm literally like, bitch, go back and, and dance on a fucking pole and let big people run the government. The adults are back in charge. Wow. No, mm. if it, you know, bartenders who look like they, you know, were only a bartender in name only at certain bar bars count as the adults in charge, then then you can keep the adults. Yeah, at the bar bar. It's more like a senior citizen, like a nursing home or a daycare center. You take your pick. Either way, diapers and shit are involved. <laughs> it's good times. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's good times. Do? Great oldies. Oh, I, I, nice to see some people in the chat missed me. I missed you guys, too. No homo. No homo suspicion points will be assessed tonight. However, uh, we got an email that popped forwarded to me six days ago. And I did not. He didn't read it close enough. And I'll tell you why. We're about to get here to the bottom. He's kind of giving it away, reaching over for there for the counter. But here we go. Um, this dude, he watched the entire stream with Lord Zed last week mm -hmm. and uh, he very much liked his comments about his experience and he says based on this i would like to suggest that at some point in your videos you mentioned the fact that since women you know the feminasties slash you know family and man hating feminasties and the nwo policies of dividing everyone into small factions and our small modern soy societies when the shit hits the fan women will not have the option of finding a brave simp to find them. As all the good guys, including all men under six feet, they've been ignoring, blaming, mocking, shaming, falsely accusing, destroying in any way they can just for fun, will never ever help them when the, the crash comes. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with that, just because biological programming is kind uh, of really overcome. I, I, it won't be 100%. But it'll, it'll be enough. It'll be a sizable chunk. Yes. SMV will crash with the society they destroyed. The currency will be, the, the Quantaha currency will be worth the value of paper money, which is nothing. They can be strong and independent on their own as they wish so hard to be. I was such a good guy that I lost everything. House, car, job, daughter. Thank God I had friends that helped me survive this 11 years long ordeal. Mm. It cost me. Two hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars in legal fees, and no matter how many times I won in court, my ex simply did not respect the judgments. They could have written the court orders on toilet paper, given what she did with them. I am a prepper. My name on bit shoot is Tyrone Thundercock. <laughs> I was thrown off of YouTube for no reason at all years ago when they did their first purge. And I have sent you a subject that you made into a video. The wife who demanded that her husband made her co-owner of his business and then deprived him of sex for years, only to realize that her husband rejected her when she came into her 40s. Oh, the irony. I that story. 
I've been wanting to write the, a story about how my mother, born in 1920, destroyed my father, who was born in 1913, just to prove the point that the female behavior has been going on since forever. She used the exact same tactics that you describe in modern whammon, the very same. It's in their DNA like spiders eat their mother after birth and know how to spin a perfect web without any training or teaching. Many, many years ago, I watched a video on YouTube that showed an army officer dressing up in his uniform in his bedroom, putting a plastic bag over his head. Well, he didn't do that part. He laid it down. And then taking a pistol, and it was you who did this video. It kept me from repeating the same. Self-deletion is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Please add me to the number of men you have saved. You are number 543. Good, sir. All right. I'll drink to that. Hell yeah. Mm. Best regards, Tyrone Thundercock. <laughs> now, when it comes to like women destroying lives, I have seen thousands of instances where dudes were just fleeced to the to the max. Yep. And because I was dick thinking and I didn't have that father figure in my life to explain how shit really is, I like, oh, I'm uh -huh. gonna go shake the horror tree and a wife will fall out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. What could go wrong? <laughs> Dude. It'll be just fine. You want to talk about a three ring circus? It's exactly what that fucking marriage was. It was yeah. terrible. Right. And she probably had a plan too. Um, I don't think she planned it from the beginning, but it, when I came home from Iraq wounded, you could tell she was like, I, I she just drew a red line through my name and that was it for the pop star. There you go. Uh, and that is the whole basis for tonight's stream. We've got some written stories. Uh, we even have an early, very early super chat that was sent in by Mando. And it, it's kind of, it throws back to Monday's ride and roast. Uh, whether or not you believe that story happened exactly as it was written, I personally don't, but you know, it, it still alludes to some very serious problems with the modern ladies. And uh, we want to know what some of your nastiest experiences were. Yeah. Also, we did get a gratitude email about administrative violence. Outstanding. Yeah, it was just a very short one. I remember seeing yeah, yeah. it. He's like, a, he said it worked like a charm. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't sell you anything that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You got to fight dirty in a, in a dirty system. Yeah. We're not yeah. Samsung. Like that guy's story, trying to be uh, the nice guy. That um, yeah. I've even found, and most people I know, the more you're an asshole, the uh, it genuinely gets you further. Sadly, but that's the case. Uh, that's very true, especially with women. Well, even even you don't have to be like necessarily a super duper turbo asshole. Nope. You just have to be nice instead of kind. If you're nice, they can roll over you. If you're kind, there's stipulations on that. Kindness is given to those who earn it. If you're overly nice, you're a welcome man. Well, being nice is where you will say white lies oh, and, yeah. and, and, and you will go with the flow because you don't want to make oh. waves. That, that's that's nice. Yeah, the, the thoughts on Spinstagram, you know, they they show up 300 pounds in a bikini. How do I look? Oh, you look great, baby. Well, yeah. I'm telling her that she looks great, so maybe I could finally break me off a piece. I can finally take the shrimp or shrink wrap off my peg D. And that right there is setting you up because yep. you you have to be able to instill your boundaries and enforce your boundaries. Yep. Otherwise, they're going to chronically shit test you. And if, if you come right off the bat of like kissing ass, like yep. they may be impulsive. They may be emotional, but they know that they're not fucking stupid. So, yeah. you know, be a good man. Don't be a nice yep. guy. If you have no dignity in the pursuit of in the pursuit of poon, that's equivalent to desperation. And that turns women off. Yeah, instantly. And if you're kind, when she shows up and says, "How do I look?" And you're like, "Well, you look like a buffalo with, uh, <laughs> you know, a bra on." <laughs> you know, sure, she'll get upset, but you're being totally honest. You look like a buffalo with a bra on. You know, go go run a few. If, yeah. if you're overweight, it's all numbers. You ate your way in, you walk your way out, and that's as per Bill Burr. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. Somebody that I knew back in the day who, who loves to like pop in and out of my life. You know, there, there's people who do that. And 
shows up, tells me I'm getting divorced again. It turns out my 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 husband's leaving me. He's trans now, and my kids are all messed up. And blah blah blah. Like uh, I'm trying to get back out there though. It's a, what, but no one's returning my messages. Am I not cute enough? And I was like, let me just lay this out for you. Like first of all, if you're coming to me, you expect the truth, not white lies. You are not even 40. You're twice divorced. You're about double the weight you were when I knew you over 10 years ago, and you've got a bunch of kids in tow. The only men who will go for you are not the men you're going to want. Correct. So get comfy now with this knowledge. Hasn't Whoa. spoken to me since. <laughs> but and, I know and I know exactly what she was expecting. Oh, no, honey, you look great. No, no. you don't. I'd rather bathe in a piss pool filled with Amy Horton's urine. Oh, my God. Oh, that's... That's, that's messed that's up. That's tragic. That's tra oh, I'm that's sorry. tragic. I'm, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I went too far. No, no, you didn't go far. Should I go for kitty anal glands instead next time? <laughs> as long as Amy Horton's involved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure she will be if there are Dude. cats involved. <laughs> that's I hate cats. <laughs> and that just gives me a reason not to have them ever. <laughs> I know, right? I can't stand them. Uh, speaking of crazy cats, we got Mando's Super Chad. Double duty contribution for tonight, he says. I'm sadly traveling for my last drill this evening, so I cannot call this in. Hmm. Speaking of which, ladies and germs, StreamYard link has been pasted into the chat on every channel we are broadcasting on. If you have a story of nastiness that you want to share, call in. We want to hear from you. Oh, yeah. But, he says, I do have a, or should I say, where, 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 where there? Right there. Ah, but I do have a nasty woman story for your displeasure. Oh. Yes, that was displeasure. The story may also make the popster puke. I recommend a vomit bucket. Oh, come on, man. You better get ready, Pop. Here we go. Early in my time in the U.S. Army, I was a medic, uh, specifically an OR tech for surgery. One of the early surgeries I scrubbed in on was supposed to be a simple umbilical hernia repair. Roughly 15-minute surgery for those who are uninitiated. Until Murphy shows up. Yes. Mm -hmm. The patient was rather cute. I think, you know, six and a half, seven. Young woman, age withheld for privacy reasons. Her x-rays showed evidence of a hernia. When the doctor felt along the area where the hernia was indicated, he felt the swelling of a hernia. When we opened her up to fix the hernia, there was no hernia present. Ooh, interesting. At this point, the doctor's thinking, this is strange. The nurse and myself are looking at each other going, oh, spit. Doctor finally decides he's finished poking around in her gut area. Phrasing and partially closes the site while requesting a portable x-ray. As we're waiting for the device, the doctor notices a bit of white stuff coming from the patient's belly button. The nurse swears up and down she got all the pus while doing the prep, but that there was a surprising amount of it for the patient's size. Uh. Starting with a small flat probe uh. that we had in the set, the doctor uh. began examining the patient's belly uh, button. You just said pus. Yes, I did say pus. Oh, God. Then he looks at me and says, give me the small abdominal retractor. For those that don't know, a small abdominal retractor, for that said, had two slightly curved spatulas and was used to pull back parts of the deep abdomen. This instrument is roughly one inch by two inches at the business end. Mm. Doctor sticks it into the patient's belly button and gagging slightly scoops out what looks like cottage cheese from the patient's abdomen. Oh, my God. 15 minutes and one disturbingly full kidney basin later, and the x-ray machine arrives. Oh. We scan the surgical site and no hernia anymore. To my knowledge, this was the first and God willing last umbilical cheesyotomy in army medical history. What the hell is that? Lesson from this, when you shower, make sure you wash your damn belly button. It should not need, need to be said, but this young lady chose not to, and four people and her paid for her lack of hygiene. That is disgusting. What the fuck? Wow. How the fuck does that happen? Lord have mercy. Is that <laughs> real? Like you're literally getting the shower. It's like this. There you go. You're done. There you go. Instead, it looks like it's full of man bazooka juice. It, it was literally a giant zit. Just squeeze it out. Oh my god. Wow. That is bad, this, man. This is bad, right? Holy smoke and Joe Frazier. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> that was a bad one, man. That's a really bad one. <sighs> oh, quite horrendous on that one. Mm. What's going on here? That's that's quite a vomit pill. I decided to throw together a few of my own nastinesses. I'm just gonna go through them and toss them in. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do these in chronological order just throughout the night. 
Um, throughout my life, I've known a lot of na- a lot of nasty women, but the earliest one that I ever met mm. was when I was fifteen. Mm. She was fourteen. At the age of fourteen, she already had two miscarriages and a snooch hoover done, and she thought I would date her. So basically, at the age of fourteen, she already had the thousand cock stare. Yep. Okay. It's like you're not even trying to be like a an asshole, but there's there's probably going to be serious long term emotional damage there. Well, yeah. Um, she's got a few bastard kids now, and last I heard, she was already divorced from a dude, the only dude who would marry her, and he's about twenty years older. Looked old enough to be her dad. Well, you get what you get. Sad. You yeah, get what you is. get. You don't throw a fit. Horrendous. <sighs> You know, I don't know. I would like to act. That'd be kind of cool to get a, a show where we do a bunch of stories about what happened to people's exes after the, after they break up. Oh, yeah. I think we talked about that, you know, like checking in on the train wreck or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, but it'd be cool if we actually had some uh, stories from other people. You know what? They're probably bad because the way their nature is, they would probably be rubbing it in their faces. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I mean, maybe, I, you know, just if like they're, you know, like, like that fucking loser, it seems like if they can be vindictive, like through administrative ways, like hiding kids, reputational damages, it seems like if they could like mock you publicly by yeah. success, why not? <laughs> well, like that, that one uh, uh, Spanish lady I dated for about four years while I was in college and then it went south. Well, she, you know, later married a dude and he's like a habitual cheater Shut always her. cheating on her well yeah i mean but but she just has to show him that that, that she's worth it you know she can fix him right uh, that that's the female say. equivalent of she different she loves me oh, oh i can fix him he, he, he just needs a good woman the female version of captain save a hoe pretty much yeah well my thing is this is i was kind of when i found this out and I found that out secondhand because I don't talk to that woman anymore, nor do I want to. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, somebody was like, yeah, I know. they were like going to get divorced a couple of times. He just keeps cheating on her. Yeah. And I think she's got three kids now, so she's stuck. And she's done. She's stuck, and she knows she's it. done. Uh, Blake's pipes in the chat. He says he has a story. The uh, link to the Streamyard call-in is pinned right there. If you got a story you want to share, bring it on. I pasted it everywhere. I will paste it again since I can't. I don't think I can pin things in the Rumble chat. I'll see if I can give it a shot. I don't know. Uh, no, it doesn't look like you can. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep pasting it in there. I'll paste it over here on MGTOW. I know that I can paste it over on uh, pin it on MGTOW. So I'm gonna pin that one so you guys can call in if you get any fun stories here. Uh live stream chat over on Odyssey's Frozen. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a problem. Uh oh. Son of a bitch. It, it, it's 50 50 it could be either on odyssey all right so we're gonna pin that boom there you go and we do have some uh, new cards from airman fitzwell or at least his his namesake that's gonna be coming up later on tonight on new tech and uh yeah we got some hilarious effed up but funny videos for you guys <laughs> the anal glance was just the beginning oh my god it's gonna be hilarious hey look you want to live in box wine and cat land i know right from time to time you're oh, gonna get it. you're gonna get the analies from your cat. <sighs> uh, Pimped out platypus has an idea for the checking in on your X stream. He wants to call it the battle damage assessment. Ooh, I like that. Or some of these chicks, it could be the scattle damage assessment. <laughs> scattle because shit happens. And John Bristol says thanks to Pop for reaching out to my brother. All right, awesome. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, you know, I have actually called quite a few people over the years. Yeah, when I get like an email, like you gotta call this guy. It's bad. It's bad, and I'll be like, okay, hmm. and I call him, and I'm like, don't give my fucking number out. <laughs> uh, Jerry Conway with an interesting tech issue: zero sound in my Brave browser. Switch to the much hated Firefox browser, and the sound is fine. I noticed that on many Rumble channels, including my own, viewing with the Brave browser. That's interesting. I've never had that. It's got to be before. some kind of co- software conflict. It could be, yeah. Uh, and and any time it's a brand new site and they're constantly updating things, there's going to be growing pains, and certain browsers are not going to work the best. 
Uh, Netguy1975 says, I remember the guy you talked about who was uh, screwing with his ex-wife grave. Many guys don't get over it. My dad is still bitching about my mom. <laughs> Listen, so. uh, I'm going to be honest. Picking a wife is the single greatest responsibility a man has because it will affect you for the rest of of your air sucking days you aren't kidding like me i, I chose poorly Poor. and it almost i almost paid the ultimate price for it yep so yeah and if you want to maintain a grudge or whatever be my guest because i'm not the forgiveness guy myself <laughs> well there's a reason why administrative violence exists yeah yes. i just wouldn't do it again and it has nothing to do with forgiveness it just has to do with i oh, learn yeah. yeah i learn and the fact remains no matter what, she will always, no matter who she may be, she will always have the ability to fucking do what has been done. That's right. Correct. No thanks. Even if you make her sing. <laughs> Take the cop. This is for El Snows. You want it singing pop and a drinking straw. <laughs> I cannot believe that how well my face fits on that. Uh, and thank you to Gerald Powell for your dollar donation. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you. All right. Armed Ohio Heathen says, number 453 from the Self-Deletion Prevention Board checking in. Pop, when I find time, I have a story to email you about my passport bro journey in Brazil last year with a 9 out of 10 senorita. All right. Yeah. Nice. I'd love to. Hear. We'll read the stories. We, it's a good time. We love stories. Yes. Uh, again, Guy looks like he sent in one of his pop deep fakes. We'll save that for new tech mm. later on. Thank you very much. And we do have a chat from Iron Riddle. Booyah. He says, I can't call in, but please read. I think we could do that. That's what I'm here for. And the story is called Homestead Scars and Red Pills. For anyone not familiar with my history, my LTR, Angels, an Army veteran, 88 Mike, also has an extensive medical background in the civilian sector. Me, I'm a Marine veteran, MedSEP, avionics technician, still working in aerospace engineering. I was put in a goat pen in my homestead last weekend. I lifted the T-post hammer a bit too high, so instead of sliding it back down the T-post, got it caught. I slammed the top edge down on top of my head. Oof. Definitely rang my bell and put me on the ground, so I took a little break to eat some crayons and drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> Blue crayons are best because later it's like shitting a smurf. <laughs> Dave, can you confirm or deny? I mean, this there's uh, he's correct. I'll uh, I'll confirm. <laughs> I like red myself. But... You just eat the whole pack and you shit some gay pride. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rainbows, motherfucker. <laughs> Goddamn happy. I'm sure Dear Sarge would have some thoughts on such. <laughs> so happy. I'm so happy. Yeah. I got the bleeding to stop. Took a few shots of Kraken to numb the pain. Great choice. Kraken is good. If you're going to drink some, cut my balls, drink some Kraken. Mm -hmm. And I went back to work. Angel came out to check on me an hour or so later and was very concerned. She says, holy shit, what did you do? Are you okay? I had not considered the sight that I was. And blood all in my hair, all over my shirt. I look like a Freddy Krueger victim. I said, <laughs> I'm fine. Stop worrying. Checks my head and says, you know, you have a huge cut on your head. Damn it. You're going to need stitches. They don't use stitches on your head. They use staples. Stop sorting the fly shit out of the pepper. You know what I mean? You <laughs> ass. Yeah, good luck trying to do that with boxing gloves. Nice. Yes, I know. What the fuck are you thinking? Get chill out, bitch. I'm fine. <laughs> We've been together almost seven years and she did something she's never done before. This ought to be interesting. <clears throat> She took a step back, tilted her head to the side, and pulled out the knife hand. <laughs> I swear, I heard the bolt go home and chamber the first round. How do you out to your damn mind, you fucking jarhead? You're not supposed to give up your air addiction before me, and especially not on my watch. Now get in the fucking Jeep. I'm taking you to the ER. <laughs> you got a good woman there, man. That is fucking awesome. I didn't know you cared so much, he says. <laughs> now she has tears in her eyes. Please, let me take you. She then came over and hugged me like a koala bear. Please let me help you. I don't know why she's Mexican in my mind. I'm sorry. I need to know you don't have a concussion or worse. Your brain could be hemorrhaging. I kissed her deeply, getting my blood on her face. Well, you, if you have your red wings, you're just returning the favor. Yeah, yeah. And her tears and snot on mine. 
just it's, it's, you could have left the snot out. And it's, it's you know you could have left the snot out. And that's love right there. <laughs> just just slurp it all up. Ah! <laughs> along with the cootie juices on the dishes. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll clean up here and we'll go. I cleaned up my tools, all the ha- empty half shell casing or empty shell casing. 60 minutes later, I'm in an ER room when two nurses come in. The first was a 30 something solid four pops type of woman <laughs> and a roly poly dude who is Z snap gay cruise kind of gay. Mm. Blake might know him. <laughs> you bundle of sticks. He says, oh, my, look at you. What did you do to yourself? As he's trying to flirt with me, which puts me into full-on hetero mode and eliminate any and all gay vibes. Mm. I don't want this guy to get any ideas. Doctor came in, and she was very nice to look at. Then 40-something, solid six. So she probably came down from an eight. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm telling my story again for about the fifth time, and she orders some Demerol for me. Now, in my condition, I've been working all day in the heat, dehydrated, blood loss, and about six shots of Kraken over the last three hours. So that Demerol hit quick. Yes, it does. Now, I'm laying on the table. Doctor's at the computer with her back facing me. Z-Snap is cleaning the cut out of my head, and the 40-something nurse walks in the room. Doctor says, I'm going to order a cat scan for you because I want to be sure that you don't have any fractures in your skull or your neck. I'm looking up at the really psychedelic lights and thinking to myself, sweet, I love pussy. <laughs> a doctor looks over her shoulder with a smirking grin. 30 something nurse giggles with her hand over her mouth. And then I thought, oh shit, Did I just say that out loud. <laughs> yeah, I, I have said some stuff. Z Snap says, all disgusted, you sure, Dad. Funny, the two women were not offended by my lewd comment, but the gay man was. <laughs> right, uh, hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> if you are under anesthesia, people. Say shit. Yeah. Because when they were doing it to me, I did. I said some weird shit. They like give you the initial shot. Yeah. And I'm literally laying on the table and I look over at this one woman. And she's like a, a let's just say a fat black woman. <laughs> and I, let's but, just and say. She, and she had braces. And I go, what do you call a, a, woman, a black woman with braces? What do you call it? And she's like, no, child, what? I go, black and decker, pecker, wrecker. I remember she's like we've had enough of you Black <laughs> and Decker, i woke up Hector in the recovery Rick. room nice yeah mine wasn't nearly as lewd uh, i will say I-, I woke up and the first thing that was in front of me was this nurse wearing like fuchsia scrubs and all i did was i looked at it, my eyes went wide and i was like you're the worst ninja i've ever seen you should wear dark colors they're gonna see you coming like a mile away <laughs> And she starts laughing her ass off. She's like, would you like some juice? I said, I would love some juice. And she just walks off giggling. And then I hear like, you know, giggling, bursting out from like the med station. <laughs> Was it that funny? <laughs> well, it's got people. Look, listen, we could probably do a whole stream on funny shit people do on anesthesia. We could just do a, like a whole David after dentist stream. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's like a whole genre by itself on YouTube is people waking up from anesthesia and saying really kooky shit. But uh, he he's almost done here. Fast forward now. I have zero fractures, seven staples in my grape, and three phone numbers that I will never call. I'm back in my own bed with Angel getting cootie juices on my peg D. Winning. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's hilarious. And because he said it, and because it was requested by Single for Life on MGTOW. I don't want your cootie juice on my dishes. Cootie juices on my dishes. Outstanding. Oh my it never gets old. Nope. What do you guys see the new end bumper I threw oh together for tonight? God, that is hilarious. Uh, we got Crazy Uncle says, with the video from the beginning of the stream, did you know what the cat said right before she ran to the bathroom? Wow! Right in the kisser. And speaking of right in the kisser, we have the man himself right here, ready to tell us a story. Crazy Uncle in the house. How you doing, All sir? All right! Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? Am I coming in? Please tell me the mic works. Yeah, you're good. Sound just fine. Oh, and, and, and once again, for the record, he's not me. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how that works? If you know, you know. I mean, I know we're twins, but whatever. 
Oh yeah, we you saw. Are my, you are a brother from another mother, but we'll go into that. I got my notes here, so I don't waste your time because I bet you have people waiting in the wings. Yeah, so, we just got we got one more, and we definitely have some stories that we've been sitting on for a bit. But by all means, sir, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, since this is the gross you out stream, I just want to hit a few quick ones. First one, I was, this is the last time I went to a strip club. So you know it's going to be good. Drink I go time. in the back. The lady's like, oh, you want to dance? I was like, well, I'll have one before I leave because I had already finished my beer. I go to sit down. I put my hands down. And as my hands wrap around the chair, my fingers go into something gooey. I got up and bolted to the bathroom. Went, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Oh. And the, the bouncer actually came and asked me what's going on. I'm like, I'm never coming back. I'm never coming back. I'm never coming back. <laughs> out the door. And I, I'm yeah. serious. I ran out of there so fast. I eclipsed light speed and went to plaid. That's how fast I got out of there. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty. Uh, I don't even want to know what was on your hands. I, I, no, I can assume. I, I don't even want to know either. Honestly, it's, I didn't want to look. Oh. Now, here's one actually from when I was a drill sergeant. Now, try to keep your professionalism doing this one. Guy comes up. He has his battle buddy. He's like, drill sergeant, um, I think I need to see the medics. What for? I, I think I need to see him. What for? He doesn't want to say. And we're like, okay. We walk to the back away from folks. Like, What's going on? Drill sergeant, my anus is bleeding. Keep a straight face and be professional when some guy who's probably 20 years old standing right next to his battle buddy is doing that. I'm like, you can't stay professional. I'm sorry. You're done. <laughs> My anus is bleeding. <laughs> Pretty much that we were trying not to say that is it was so difficult. Or, or now, you know, when you got to tell your commander, you're like, guy, uh, he's, he's having a butthole situation. He's having a butthole situation. I mean, that's so, what I used to do. You got to go wash his back pussy in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> We actually found out what the issue was. It was uh, all the stuff they give you on the airplane that's supposed to stop you up so everybody doesn't, you know, drop one at 30,000 feet. It, as soon as you start eating normal food, it all came out at once and ripped something. Oh, it does happen. He was fine. It'll be, yeah, fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> He'll just sew his asshole shut. It's fine. I mean, listen, that's, uh, some of those MRE shits I've had, <laughs> oh, the like 18-inch... <laughs> logs as big around as like a soda can <laughs> uh, blew up my o -ring like, like a literal pretzel uh pretzel can or whatever pringles can pringles coming out can, yeah. Yeah, there so you go. bad it's, that when they hit the bottom of the bowl they flip forward and slap you on the nuts i mean it's like uh, this long <laughs> it was bad that's you, when you, you just you, know, you close the lid and you leave a post-it note gone to get a measuring tape might be a new world record <laughs> It's over 200 giggles. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, that was bad. Yeah, this is bad, right? This is bad. Okay, I wanted to save this one for the... I was hoping you guys would have a stream where people call in with jokes, but I figured this one would suit. Joke okay, word. Obviously, it's just a joke, guys. This didn't actually happen, but guy goes into a, a, a brothel. He's like, I got 100 bucks. Can I get anything special? They said, well, uh, we got... Evelyn here, she's got something special. So, okay, so he takes her in the back. She goes, I'll give you the best BJ you ever had, but tell you what, if I can do this, I can sing the national anthem, give you a blowjob, and you will finish on time. He's like, what? No, if I can do this, you pay me double, but if you, if you can't finish, then it's free. Okay, cool. I remember this one. So she goes down, and, oh, see, can you, she's going on, and right <laughs> home of the brave, he freaking, pop, bam, launches that sucker's like, <laughs> No freaking way. What the hell? What the hell? He's all delusion all, all there. He throws the 200 bucks down. He's like, okay, that was awesome. But on the way to the door, he turns and goes, I, I got to find out how in the hell she did that. As he turns around, he sees her glass eye on the table. Yep. <laughs> A socket rim, <laughs> rim job. Socket uh, rim job. <laughs> who needs to rip somebody's head off to skull fuck them? I mean, seriously. That's uh, wow. true. <laughs> socket blink job. All right. Well, and the that's great the thing is. If you ever have a lot of money that you need someone to keep an eye on, she's there to help. Yeah. Ugh. I like Literally. it. I got nothing on that. Got <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my dad jokes, bro. Well, eh, what are you unfortunately, I, I burned all mine out the VFW earlier, so uh, that happens. I'm, not, I'm out of my notes, actually. I wrote things down so I wouldn't waste you guys' time. So you got somebody <laughs> waiting, and yeah. good luck to everybody. I'm going to go back to well, watching you guys. 
All right. All right. You guys got something funny, but I will say I will never stand up to anybody who's from the medical industry when it comes to gross shit. <laughs> you guys win. You, yes. Seriously. You I, I give up. I don't even want to. <laughs> you are not kidding, man. Woo. Oof. Some of the Especially stuff the potato pussy. I mean, ugh. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh, now I do oh, need the roots. Okay. <laughs> They're going to remake Roots, and it's going to be about her. <laughs> That's nasty, man. <laughs> he's going to go throw up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's getting nauseous. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Crazy Uncle. Always a pleasure. Good, sir. Take it easy. Good night. Take it easy. <laughs> oh, man, we got a few here. Uh, we got a few more chats here from Dylan. He says, what do you call a grove of whore trees? A horchard. <laughs> Don't pick from the whore tree. Yeah. Uh, John Galt from Canada. My ex-wife has ballooned up to the 600 pound mark. That. Damn. That is some good karma right there. That is, it must be very tasty, calorie dense karma. Oh, uh. Alex Patino, here's a stupid idea. What if Billy Bomb Bomb takes the singing pop combined with the more cock? That'd be funny to throw straws at pop over. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Man. Uh, Ken J says, here's 20 and a shot of mead for me. Keep it up, fuck sticks. Cheers. Thank you very much. And of course, we've got another gentleman here waiting in the wings, ready to gross us all out. Shadow Tempest, welcome to the show, good sir. How's it going, gentlemen? We're surviving pretty good, man. Something Likewise, uh, just for some context, I'm the dumbass that sent you all that story here a couple months ago about dealing with my ex-wife in the army and shit like that. Um, mm -hmm. Pass your uh, information for Pop. Had a fellow coworker. I gave him my attorney. Now he uh, now he has uh, custody of his daughter. So you know, I paid it forward, linked him your shit, and uh, now he's doing really well. So so my. You're talking about administrative violence or some of my videos? Everything. Administrative violence. Referred him to my attorney. Gave him the tips that I used to uh, overcome my ex-wife. Shit like that. Basically, I paid it for it, just like you said. So so the shit works, right? It works. And unfortunately, I'm kind of in another cold war at the moment. <laughs> but long story short, I bought my daughter a cell phone. And her mother is not happy about that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she can. Uh, what's that word? Uh, fuck yeah, right fuck off. off. She can pound no. sand. But yeah. Um, Be careful you don't get any anal seepage on your feet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrendous. Anyways, uh, now nah, my ex wife was pretty grody. Uh, needs to say she had a lot of uh, yeast problems, to put it mildly. <laughs> She's like, why don't you ever go down on me? I'm like, it smelled like. Um, Smelled like rotten cheese, and you know, Ugh. when certain things went into certain places, I came out and it looked like fucking cheese. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh man, yeah. And now, this poor sod that's with her, supposedly now he's engaged to her. And keep in mind, my ex wife is 34, he's like what 25 or some shit. Oh my, <laughs> what a dumbass, <laughs> yeah. But, um, nah, she's fucking grody, she smelled. And my buddy from the army posted a meme with this fucked up looking panties. Uh -huh. And it said, you're crying over this girl whose underwear used to look like this. And I'm like, you're not wrong about that, brother. <laughs> How long were you married to her for? Eight years. Ooh. And what, what caused it to fall apart? Jody? Uh, my best friend and her. She had an affair with my best friend while I was um, better ridden from a car accident. All right. No, yeah. Hang on a minute now. All right. Oh, so your, your best friend at the time decided to do that. Best friend. Yep. Yep. All right. And was there any um, payback? I had some buddies on standby who wanted to, who had some connections in the area who wanted to go down and absolutely fucking wreck this guy. But at the time, the only thing I was more concerned about was getting my daughter back. I wanted to try and keep my name as clear as possible. So, well, I now that you have your daughter, things can still happen. I don't even know where this fucker even lives anymore. I even forgot okay. his fucking name just because right, I've been gotcha. doing my best to, you know. Yeah. I, yeah I, I get mean, it, man. I get it. Like, there was a two-mile area I refused to drive through because uh, this dude that was banging my ex, and I knew if I, I drove through that, I would go right into hunt and kill mode. <laughs> yeah. Um, my daughter had a recital the other night at a school where she actually just got into the clarinet and my ex-wife and her, you know, boyfriend or whatever were there. 
And needless to say, another guy being around my daughter does not sit well with me at all. I'm a former. No, it doesn't. No. It, I'm a former it, it, infantryman, and you know I've worked very hard to put away some of my worst tendencies. And seeing that, you know, tends to really boil well, my blood. <laughs> uh, you can well, first of all, like what I did when uh, you know I found out there was other individuals hanging around my kids is I literally had private investigators, you know, dig into their shit. And it's not that expensive, and it gives you some peace of mind. Gotcha. Because mind. if if you uh, do a criminal check and there's any kind of uh, pedophilia or any of that crap, you can go right to the judge and shut that shit down. Well, needless to say, this dude does have a bit of a reputation, not a good one, but nothing that's provable. It's more just hearsay. So I've definitely kept my ear to the ground and my okay. finger on the pulse of what's going on. So it's Kinda not just... provable yet. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to fight smart here at this point, and you know, that's right. That's why I gave my daughter a cell phone so if she needed any help, she could call me. But her mother wasn't happy about that at all. Like and first how, thing, how often do you see your kid? Week on, week off. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't pay any child support. I don't pay any alimony. I see her a week on, week off, you know, so. Dude, that's a win. Yes, yeah, a win all day long, man. Yeah, that's why I'm, you know, trying to fight as, be as careful as I can, because I don't want to, you know, risk ruining that by, you know, punching some fucking kid in the mouth. So. <laughs> and, and the administrative violence helped you get that, right? Absolutely, Pop. Yeah. And, um, you yeah. know, my my father was, was a former Lurs guy and bat guy, so, you know, your stuff plus his stuff, you know, I kind of put it together in my head and you know is he still alive oh yeah my old man's still alive do you um, ever show him my videos oh yeah he loves your shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um, <laughs> i'm actually surprised you too i know the range of back community is pretty small my father was in panama as well so you know yeah what's your what, what's your father's last name drum d-r-u-m-m -M. oh sounds delta familiar. romeo uniform mike mike yeah, but when I jumped into Panama, I was just an E4, so I was literally road grease. <laughs> I think so was my father. He was also Lurse as well, so, you know, I mean. Yeah, Lurse, looking back on it, it, it was the most stupidest fun job ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, being infantry, I could honestly say the same thing, you know, looking mm -hmm. back on it now, one thing's for sure, I wouldn't have gotten fucking married, that's for damn sure. And <laughs> Yep. That's where I kind of run into a little bit of a uh, conundrum. You know, on the one hand, if I never met my ex-wife, I wouldn't have my daughter. So, you know, it's one of those things where I wish I never met her. But at the same time, I wouldn't trade anything for my daughter. So No, no, I got gotcha. you. That's actually a healthy uh, mindset, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, there's a lot of people who would love a rewind button. But <laughs> yeah. I, I think all those uh, crazy time travel movies have shown us by now that like you change one little thing, yeah, yeah. you but, never know uh, what yep. you might undo that hate, you could never live without. I hate the time travel shit. Uh, <laughs> well, Coyless. this look back to the future. <laughs> this time I would have sniffed before I jumped. So you know. <laughs> so so have... that's why you just don't want to get caught sniffing before you jump. <laughs> It's a well, I, would, I would have done the finger test, and when I saw the cheese come out on my fucking fingers, yeah. I would have changed my mind. Yeah, no kidding. God damn, that's nasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to know what that smell is, just Google bacterial vaginosis and bring a bucket. And, well, we call it the burning ring of fire. <laughs> There's always that, too. Yeah. I called it, um... I called my it piss cheese. is on fire! <laughs> oh All God, right, right. Dude, Tempest. <laughs> Who's the next guy? Oh, we're, we're actually we're we're uh, we're all good here. Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we uh, before we move on, Shadow Tempest? Or are you good to go? I'm good to go, guys. I really appreciate everything, and um, you know I paid it forward. So that's all I ask. Awesome. Share the channel, pay it forward, help as many guys as you can, because we'll I'm so top. tired of watching these dudes get their hope drained away, and they just fucking punch out. You ain't yeah. kidding. Don't do that. Oh, or just... no, I've. I damn near came close to it myself, like I said yeah. in my stories. So. And, and I think I'm like the only guy on all of the video platforms out there that is really fighting against this male suicide you know, epidemic. I Like, nobody else really talks about it. That is our central goal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you go online and you look at shit, you know, these fucking women posts, and it's not hard to see why dudes are either not getting involved or punching their fucking ticket on and evicting themselves from the meat <laughs> suit. They're fucking insufferable. 
Uh, that's why I thought Thursday exists. We got to draw right. attention to it. Yeah. Amen to that, brother. Walk away. Right. Walk them. Take Sign it off. Take it off. Oh. All right. We got some more chats. Good for here. him that he got it. That, that worked out, though. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Good for him. Uh, Steve O-U-K, or Steve Oink, as Pop calls him. First time I had Demerol, I turned to the nurse and literally said, man, I understand drug addiction now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty good, good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> and of course single for life wants the cruise uh. I wonder, guys. I wonder what's going on here it gives me time to look shit up it's going all good so shit. Oh. false and homosexual <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got another chat from international house of whoop ass wants us to urban dictionary poseidon's kiss when water splashes up from the toilet into your butt from your poop dropping into the water yeah. it's happened many a times i think many we've times. all been there uh, Mando says, guys, that story was tame. Perhaps one day I will tell you about some of the Langstuhl or pranks. Interesting. But Langstuhl. Langstuhl, yeah. That's a hospital in Germany. Uh, I got you. Yeah, I figured it was German just from the spelling. Netguy 1975, when you go to New Tech, play Safety Briefing by Billy Von Baum, you will die laughing. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, we had a real gross one in here. Oh, my. Pimped out platypus in Iraq as a medic, a local with a colostomy was selling his wound hole, nicknamed the Colostitute, and of course it ended up with chlamydia. Oh, uh, uh, hang on a minute. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? Emotional damage. <laughs> Colostomy juices on my dishes. <laughs> Colostomy oh man! Oh wow! Uh, and the fuck is that? Oh, for the love of Pete! Wow, that is disgusting. Uh, that's horrendous. That oh, all right? All right, hang on, hang on. All right, hang on. I gotta wrap my head around this. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I I have seen He's selling. in Iraq some of the most vile shit you can imagine, uh, and what you just said literally just knocked them all down a peg <laughs> yes yes i mean just think how de the de first there's the desperation yeah you can put your dick in my open wound that, that attaches it just to my... sounds like a great idea yeah. oh, god I, I dated a chick who had not acute but a lingering case of appendicitis oh that went unchecked they thought that it was like indigestion, acid reflux, whatever the hell. Turns out it was no leaking into her body and forming a giant abscess of pus on the appendix itself. And in the process, it wound up fusing together parts of her digestive tract with an ovary. So she wound up losing like a foot of intestine. It was a whole thing. And because the infection was so severe, instead of stitching it up, they left the wound open because they thought there was a very high probability they would have to go back in at any given moment to address additional infection. Wow. So it was up to me because her mom and sisters thought it was gross as fuck to take a strip of gauze this long, soak it in saline solution, and then use, pardon my dick, a Q-tip to poke it into the wound and then dress it with a bandage. Ah, man. I never once in the weeks that I spent administering her intravenous antibiotics and poking that shit into her belly thought, that looks like my dick would fit. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> Let me guess. After it was all said and done, there was no gratitude. Oh, there was plenty of gratitude. Oh, okay. If you know what I mean. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, she wasn't one of the people who made this particular list of nastiness. This brings me on to number two, which would have happened when I was 18 years old. I was at a party. This chick, after trying to pawn me off on her friend, who I eventually did wind up hooking up with. Mm-hmm. She took her boyfriend upstairs to sleep with him before he left the party and then came back downstairs and then attempted to drag me upstairs for sloppy seconds. Literally minutes after he left. Yeah, yeah. That's nasty. I'm just trying to think here. Uh, yeah. The worst I've ever seen was... Uh, it's, a, it's another RMCQ story. 
<laughs> All right. Shocker. I'm literally at the desk. I am the CQ. I'm an E5. And somebody comes down. He's like, hey, uh, Sergeant Pop. <laughs> there's some uh, there's some action going on up there. And Action? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. I, I don't even want to explain it. You, you, you just got to see it. So I'm like, okay. I, I grab the, the huge ring of keys. Yeah. Every door in the barracks has a, has a key and, and a lock to it. And I don't knock on the door. And I, before I know it, I got eight other rangers in the hallway because <laughs> they want to see this. Of course. Key in the lock. Open it up. And literally, hit the dude, the ranger's back is to me. <laughs> And he is plowing this buffalo woman who's like 450. Oh, God. From behind. The first thing out of my mouth was like, how the hell did you get that in here? <laughs> she hoisted it up yeah, to the no side of the building like a hoist- piano. <laughs> there's no way they hoisted that woman up on a rope. I mean, <laughs> look, they did that. I mean, I caught them doing it, but I, I have no idea. So, uh, you know, I had to take appropriate action and hose them down. And that's get them that's some kung fu panda shit. <laughs> How did you manage to sneak into anywhere? But I could, uh, it's just some ranger standing up, standing behind me. And all I hear him is go, whirl. <laughs> <laughs> ah, woo. Oh, oh those woo. good times. Oh my God! Uh, Swalaber just said, "Pop, I'm reading your book, Killer of Killers, and I am enjoying it. You must have read some messed up books to write this." Actually, I didn't. No, it's all uh, just stuff that he wishes he could have done to certain people. Well, <laughs> all right. The whole thing with the Jericho Files it started off when I was about fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. I went into the post office to, and I'm waiting in line to send this package. I don't remember who it was for. And I'm just looking around, and I notice on the wall, there's like hundreds of pictures of missing people, and most of them are women. Oh, boy. And I'm like, wouldn't it be something if there's a dude out there who's hunting down and killing the people who are doing that? And it's like, weird where ideas come from, isn't it? Oh, that's Simple that, stuff. That, that was the first thing. And then, you know, I've, I've had some crazy dreams about the dream walking and astral travel. Maybe I was doing it in my sleep. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, it's literally about a psychic who hunts and kills serial killers and, yeah. and other other forces of darkness. It's literally gore porn. Hell, yeah. And if you guys Balance. didn't know that the popster writes books... Scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you to the link tree, which is also linked in the description of every place the stream is playing. And it'll t- there's a link in there that will take you to Pop's Amazon page where you can find all of his books. There are three on there currently, and Jericho Files number three is in the final stages of editing, if I remember. No, no, it's it's done editing. It's I done. just have to finish reviewing it, and uh, my mother getting sick you know, screwed that up. That'll do it. So, All right. And we have another caller on the line, John J. Wants to lend us some nastiness. How you doing, John Jay? Hi, guys. What's going on, man? I like your shirt. Thank you. <laughs> what do you got for us today besides some elegantly quafted facial hair? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little, little disorganized. <laughs> well, it kind of looks like it was organized, and then just a, a stiff breeze came in from the left. <laughs> It happens. <laughs> Just like my peg D. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> so, um, you guys also know me as Mountain Man 9395. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you in the chat before. So, um, his train of thought is still boarding at the station. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's, I'm getting some double, double feed in, in the voice. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure why we have echo cancellation on. Are you using earbuds or are you using a speaker? I'm not. That would be why it's That's a speaker. Fine. It's feeding back into itself. Yeah, yeah. But we will be nice and quiet and feel free to. Uh... Do I need to put these in? It would help. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Sorry about that. Good. And. Oh, no, it's good. Uh, we can actually read a couple of just uh, chat here because there's a question for Pop. Bob, Pop, did any of those dudes that got involved with your children slash ex ever come up positive on the sex offender list? No, no, no. If that ever happened, people would have disappeared. Yeah, not so good. And uh, he has a pickup line for the uh, 
for the bar bar on the poop deck of the Titanic. May I punch in your stool? <laughs> wow. Just wow. And then, of course, you pull out the stool at the end. <laughs> I got nothing. You disgusting riggers. All right, John nothing. Jay. Are we ready to go? <laughs> we are. All right. All right. Let's do this. All right. Gross us out. <laughs> well, it's not more of a gross out. I, I mean, I did the marriage thing once. And, um, so, uh, <laughs> I can remember this night like it was yesterday. It was uh, September 9th, 1996. And I just come home from uh, spraying fields all day long. And I was working for an egg spray applicator company up in Northern California at the time. And, and my then wife was in full rage, whatever mode. And uh, she uh, got on top of me while I was trying to get some sleep because I was just wiped out. It was a 14, 15 hour day. And uh, she started wailing on me. And like, uh, we're talking wailing or I'm like, I'm on, <laughs> she's on top of me. I'm on the bed and she starts, I'm going to kick your ass. Oh, OK. Boiling water would have been. Uh, yeah. It, it works. And uh, and I just, you know, it was downhill after that. Uh, she uh, I flipped her over. Her head, her uh, leg went flying into the windowsill, and uh, she was w- walking with a limp for like a week. <laughs> uh, well, I got on t- I, I was in a fit of rage. Uh, you know how you're blinded by rage; you can't see straight. I got on top of her and I grabbed her neck. And another, uh, and I'll be honest with you, another three minutes and she would have been dead. Oof. And okay. uh, and so. Um, uh, I snapped out of it for some reason. And, and then I got up, got in my truck and I drove right to the sheriff's department for some reason. I said, you know what? I need to go and get away from her and I need to tell the cops what happened. And, uh, spent a night in jail. You know, I called her up and then she found out I was in jail. She got, she took a statement and I took the statement and the statements matched she wasn't one of these crazy chicks that lies um, just Lucky to for you. get at. Yeah, she did have scruples, but um, <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, but you know, get looking back at it, I uh, I'm glad we both our 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 uh, our stories matched, and we got both hauled into the deputy district attorney's office in the county I was, was in, Clusa County, uh-huh. and. Uh, he told both of Deputy District Attorney Sidley and she, he told both of us, I never want to see you two in this office again. Because he's seen his rodeo before. Okay. He's seen, he's seen uh, women get violent with men and men fighting back. Mm-hmm. So uh, the marriage <laughs> the marriage still get, went, gone, uh, went, got, went on a little bit longer. And finally, I'd had enough of it. Um, and in 2005, we ended it. How and, long I have, and I haven't looked back. How long were you married? Uh, I was married from uh, 1993 to 2005, 12 years. After 12 years. Whatever happened to her? Uh, Okay. So her hometown is Evansville, Indiana, Mm -hmm. uh, just south of where you guys live. And uh, and my two daughters, they live uh, near there. And one daughter actually supports her. She's my oldest daughter's in medicine. She's 30 years old. And uh, and so... um, uh, I have not seen Allison and Kayleen since 2014. They don't want to see me, wow. but I told them that's on you. You don't want to see me. That's fine. Okay. So it just, and it really wasn't, I'll be honest with you, looking back, it really wasn't fair for me to, to be with this gal. She, she was married once before and, uh, and I, you know, it was, it was, she's nine and a half years older than me and the sex, the sex drive. I mean, that was the only good thing about the, the relationship is the sex was hot and it was frequent and she had a sex drive that was off the chart. I mean, okay. here's this, Perfect. here's this. And then here's hers way up there. And, uh, wow. yeah, men will put up with a lot uh, if the sex drive is good. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, especially when, <laughs> You know, boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some crap for this, especially when she takes her virginity away at tw- age 23. Mm. <laughs> so, 
So I was horrible with women. I was jacked up looking. I, did, I had low self-esteem. And I told myself coming out of college in uh, 1992, the first woman who wants to be with me physically gets me. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. So you live and learn. This is what life's all about. And um, now I'm dedicated to MGTOW and Red Pill. And um, I just, it is what it is. So I have started a new YouTube channel called Rule Man Life. Okay. And uh, the inspiration is you, Pop. Thank you. <laughs> so here's uh, here's coffee mugs. So it's, on my, it's, it's okay. on my website. And, uh, and I, the whole basis of the channel, men got to get out of the cities. If you read Thomas Jefferson's writings in 1800, when he ran for president in 1800, he lays it out why cities are toxic to the human condition. And I'm convinced of that. Yep. I'm absolutely convinced of that. You aren't kidding. <laughs> and so, so based on what's going on in society currently, we have massive, massive amounts of guys checking out. And I, I'm convinced that that city life is not, is not, it's not conducive. And in, it's pretty prophetic with Jefferson writes. Hey, listen, this is this is not this isn't good for for men to be cramped in and on t and living on top of one another. So yeah, and that's uh that's the basis for the channel. And um, I got a few shorts out there, and I got a couple of uh, of uh, videos on Rumble. So mm. all right, Sounds well, good, man, I'm glad I'm glad I was uh, able to help you out, bro. Yes. Thanks, Pop. Uh, uh, Better Bachelor turn on, uh, turned me on to you in uh, in a late April of of um, twenty twenty two. In the year before, uh, we had a nephew that did exactly that. He he ended it. He took a permanent solution. Now his situation was a little different. Um, it wasn't because he got into horrifically awful relationships, and he, he f saw no way out. I don't, do you guys believe in CTE? What a head injury? Yes. Yeah, I, I have one. Okay. Uh, well, cerebral encephalopathy is what they. I think that's a technical term for it. Well, in in February 2016, he got in a horrifically bad uh, ATV accident, broken bones, and he hit his head pretty hard. And um, he was never the same after that. Yep. Never the same after that. I know. Highly depressed. Yep. And if he didn't get in that accent, he would be selling fertilizer and chemicals and be a, a star pest control advisor. I have an agricultural background, so these terminal these terms are are from farming and, and agriculture background. No, I get you. Like after my TBI in two thousand four, I literally was living in a fog until about two thousand and six, about a good two two and a half years, yeah. and it, it was like. I woke up one morning. It was like the whole world was in focus. Yeah. And then I, that's when my, my spidey sense went off. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, the woman that sleeps next to you is probably getting a quart of throat yogurt. <laughs> and, I was like, ah! and then, I, you know, I know, you were right. I was absolutely right. Oh, man. And so he couldn't, he couldn't really even function after that. And then he did what he did on the south end of our family's ranch in Northern California in his truck. And, uh, and I was looking for answers and I was going through YouTube and rumble channels and I came across better bachelor and, and he said, told me about your channel and I've been a member paying member ever since. Well, thank you. I really appreciate, I appreciate it. it, John Jay. So, no, and I, I prom and I prom and I apologize. I promise you guys, I'd sent the story about my mom and dad or specifically my dad in uh, October of last year. And I just been busy building this website and working out here in the Southeastern rural Nevada where I live. Well, you do what you got to do, man. And you yeah. don't have to apologize so, to but us. I, uh, but I am going to send that letter about the story of my dad. Okay. And you said in a couple, a uh, uh, couple Sunday uh, streams um, to tell your story, the story about my dad. And it's a very positive story. And my mom and dad were married 58 and a half years until the last uh, day of July of 2018. He died in a rest home. I was there when it happened. Wow. Man. And uh, yeah, he's uh, 
his uh, he fought World War II when he was a little kid. Let me tell you, the one of the reasons why he got the F4 card and got rejected um, uh, 82 years ago this month is because uh, you know he got blood poisoning when he was uh, four years old. He stepped on a rake, and uh, the the, the uh, draft board guy. You know, all of his friends were going in because he turned 18 in July 41. And then obviously we know what happened in, yeah, in yeah. December that year. So yeah. uh, so he, the draft is, uh, draft board guy says, now nah, you're not a whole man. They only wanted A1 whole men. And since huh. he was missing his le- uh, a small butt, he wasn't. And he got rejected over that. Wow. Wow. And uh, he was pissed. He lost uh, two good friends in Italy. Yeah, he was pretty pissed off. But draft or, uh, board guy says, you're going to go home and you're going to raise food for the war effect with your dad. And that's what he did. Damn. So. Yeah. What are you going to do? Oh. Yeah. Thank you for calling in, John Jay. We got it. Thanks, Blake. Appreciate it. And pop. Take it easy. Yep. And I, put, I put the name of your channel out there. I posted it in every chat. So if anybody awesome. wants to look you up. I appreciate it. Thank All you right. very Thank much. You. Take it easy, brother. Take it All easy. Right. All right, we got a funny joke in here from El Snows. What do you call two Irishmen on Blake's cruise? Gerald Fitzpatrick and Patrick Fitzgerald. <laughs> you guys are such dicks. Never change. Asshole. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> I like that one. That's yeah. good. And I do have a story to read before we make the jump to new tech. But before we do that, we do have Outcast of the Maggot people hanging out with his green screen. What's going on, good sir? You there? Can you hear us? Can, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Outcast of the Maggot people? You're live. All right. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Oh, there he goes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I got you. Awesome. What do you got for us, good sir? You can't hear me, though, eh? Yeah, we can, we can hear, hear you just fine now, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm the guy that wrote you about the girl that was uh, taking advantage. Oh, that, that could be a lot of different emails. We got emails. a lot of stories. <laughs> <about> <laughs> taking advantage. Yeah, that's a, that's a sizable delay. Are you on a phone or something? Yeah, that is one hell of a delay. Yeah. Oh no, she 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 was taking advantage of a coma to, a comatose. Uh, a coma no, I'm not. I've got uh, headphones in my computer. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will say it does not sound like your headphones are what's being picked up because it sounds very tinny. I will say I think the microphone is probably yeah. coming from your computer itself. Yeah, she was taking right. advantage of a comatose. Oh, that's fucked up. What? That's that? like some like, Jesus. Yeah, that's some um, like Jenna Malone and Neon Demon shit. Like the world according to God. No, I've got a microphone <laughs> on the bag for a camera. Oh, okay. That's probably what's doing yeah, it. Yeah, hold on a second here. I can fix that. All right. All right. Shadow Tempest actually says, after my car accident in 2019. Hey, how's that? I- it's TBI. That sounds. Oh, much that's better. way better. Bro. There you go. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Wow. How's it doing now? Awesome. It's better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spill your guts. I want to hear this. Not as much delay. Good. Yeah. Let's go. Spill your guts. I want to hear this. Okay. Thanks, guys. Now I'm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm the guy that wrote you about the girl that was uh, taking advantage of a comatose patient. Mm-hmm. All right, that's yeah. disgusting, but yeah. <laughs> so what happened? This delay is a little... I think it might be a bigger problem. Yeah, all right. Hey, listen, Outcast... Well, yeah, it, and the way she, she explained it to me, uh, she was she was trying to... She was telling me someone else did it. Yeah, this is pretty freaking bad. Yeah. The, the delay is at, at least 10 seconds. Okay, well, I'm going to... Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell. You. All right. Yeah, he's gonna try. I'll have him try to log it out and back it. Or something. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, Shadow Tempest uh, sent in a chat right after the call. He said after his accident in nineteen, he had a serious TBI and it scrambled him pretty badly. He says my ex used it as a reason to cheat on me, saying I wasn't the same. 
Yeah, I listen, man. I un- I totally understand that. Yep, we got it. Uh, would it be any better if they just were like, "Hey, I'm a whore, and I wanted it." Like, it's almost like that would soften it. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, here's the thing. Like, in regards to my ex, if she just would have said, "Look, I want to divorce you," I, of course, I'd have been very upset. And then, you know, go through with the whole thing, and then after the fact, do what she had to do. Get her forest run through. I her. mean, I I would be pissed off, but I wouldn't be as, you know, adamantly pissed as I still. You am. wouldn't be as betrayed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because I, I mean, it, it's something it, all good things come to an end, right? Correct. But if there's respect and like, look, it's just not working for me anymore. Take your shit. You go your way. I go my way. OK, cool. There you go. Instead, it was pure vengeful betrayal. Yes, it was. Bad. And murderous. There's a dog involved well te- you can't really if somebody kills an animal it's not technically murder but it's uh, uh, it, 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 the thing is there was nothing wrong with your dog no no and it was done specifically to try to get me to freak out and that's murder smash her face in that's murder so and, and if i had to laid a finger on her because since i was a former professional fighter mm-hmm. oh you'd be fucked the courts would yeah. slam yep. fuck oh me. god and they wait they wait for especially guys like with a background like that they're gonna they'll the powers, the powers that be, have vested interests in allowing reactive abuse because reactive abuse is easy to show. And then you know you get courts, then you get fines, you get money, you get this, you get that, and you get the whole circle jerk wheel going. All right, mm-hmm. All right we're going to give this one more shot. Is the delay still there? <laughs> I would say yes. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a delay here on you guys as well. Okay, I, I think yeah. you may just have to write in and tell your story because this is kind of killing the flow. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you, it might be your internet connection too. It could be, yeah, because be he's not coming through very clean, if and using yeah. the green screen thing is going to add bandwidth to it and even cause more problems. Yeah, because if you're going through a satellite dish or something, that you get yeah. delayed like that. No, I'm using uh, Cox. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. Oh, Cox. All right. As I would just write in if I were you. Sorry, bro. I'm actually, I want to hear about how the comatose guys get uh, he, he wrote in about that. Before. All right. Well, okay. So. Here's one story. All right. Now, this one isn't exactly super nasty. It's more the lines of a, how should I phrase this? Uh, super whore. Super whore. All right. We don't know any of those around here. Her name was Rose. I don't know her last name. I don't Rose. remember it. It's been years and years. All right, now I met her in the Madigan Club on Fort Lewis. I was like 21, and uh, okay. you know, one thing led to another. We go back to her barracks, which technically is a big no go, uh, but I was dick thinking in full swing back then. So, you never, yeah, and I was slinging seed, seed like an old bird feeder. And this woman was, you know, she was a you, you couldn't satisfy her. It's just one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then I find out she's a preacher's daughter. So, you know, I'm like, okay, we're, we're done. I, I leave. I'm hanging out at the battalion. And I, I'm in. I'm literally in line for the chow hall. This is like two or three weeks later. And this dude's like, yeah, I met this really good girl named Rose. And she is like, just voracious man (laughs) and and i'm like oh god i have a another ranger eskimo brother i I had a a middle name rose in my past similar thing but uh, the thing is is uh i went i talked to this guy and i found out like this woman was banging like a different dude every two dudes two different dudes every single weekend sounds like nymphomaniac it might be and and literally i'm like well I, I'm good because I, I didn't have any drippy dick. Yeah. But <laughs> drippy dick. women that do stuff like that, you wind up with drippy dick. Yeah, uh, it's bad news bears. Yeah. Gen- genuinely not a long term investment. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> no, no. But after, you know, t- it, after the fact, I was just like, that is just vile, man. Yeah. I can't believe I fell for that. Like, bad, yep. bad. 
<laughs> Bad. I, I've told stories about the chick who had the middle name Rose in the past. Uh-huh. The one who decided to try to do a pregnancy scare with me uh, when yeah. she wasn't even a full day late for a period. But there was one that I didn't tell. And I find it hilarious. We were uh, doing some way hey hey. She, she was in control. She was on top doing her thing. And apparently, I literally fucked the shit out of her. I, I, I don't need to. What? Yep. Mm. She, we know when we finish, I have an idea she, she lays back on the pillow, and I look down, and there's like nuggets on oh. my, my knees. And she's like, I don't know where those came from. Like, <laughs> and I just, I just, I, I just kind of like, I put like the thing, like the lid, like a Kleenex over it. I was just like, I'm going to go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I didn't, I, I didn't point any fingers. I'm just like, this is obviously she's embarrassed. So that she, is what it is. <laughs> so she's an egg layer. Apparently chocolate egg layer. <laughs> <laughs> like a Cadbury egg layer. Oh, that is just walk, nasty. Walk, 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 walk. Jesus. <laughs> oh. No, no. She got shit on my poop deck, man. Oh, god damn. <laughs> I, I've never had anything like that. It wasn't like, I mean, thankfully, it wasn't like diarrhea or something that would have been horrendous. You know, it, it was something that I could easily pick up and throw in the trash. <laughs> So, oh, you know, you're not walking your dog, bro. That's <laughs> I know, what right? I'm <laughs> getting a plastic bag oh, or like Jesus, a latex glove and pick terrible. it up, but then pull the bag inside out, just <laughs> just just saunter off you doing the walk to, of like... shame. <laughs> I didn't know whether to be proud of myself or be disgusted. <laughs> it's just so shocking. There like, was, was so many conflicting shark. emotions. <laughs> shocking, sharting, shocking. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> But I mean, this is like in the 80s, in the early 90s, yeah. and this is Fort Lewis, and it was just, I would say, just as bad as it is today. Yeah. In regards to like women, just you know, just putting it out there. Yep. I can only imagine what it's like on an active duty post now with all of the dating apps and Facebook and Instagram. Oh God, uh, what are you gonna do? <sighs> <laughs> you seen these commercials? Base life and barracks. Oh my God! This oh, is a cesspool man. of debauchery. Yeah. yeah. In, in fact, in my uh, one of my reserve units, uh, I, you know, some guy walked up to me, you know, in the unit. He goes, "Hey, man, uh, Sergeant Pop, yeah, this these two females uh, back in the uh, the hotel rooms because the government now puts pays for hotel rooms for soldiers during drill." Of course. And then he goes, there was just a one hell of a worm pile going on, and uh, that it, it it needs to come to an end because this is this is going to go bad. Yeah, this is going to be bad. So literally, I got the names of all of the dudes. We get into this one room, and I'm like, all right, this is this. I'm only going to tell you this one time. <laughs> uh, if I hear of this ever happening again, I am going to do everything in my power to turn it, your lives inside out, and. Uh, punish the absolute living shit out of you because you're going to catch a charge at some point if the army catches wind of this you're done done i mean donezo because that it it's even worse now but back then you know a woman can make an accusation and then it was a long hold drawn out investigation and um <laughs> I, I i probably saved a couple of these guys careers you know, from you know, because they were dick thinking. <laughs> but I, I, and what, and one of these female soldiers actually uh, now lives in Hawaii, and I think she's still in the, in the service over there. And let's be honest, leopard doesn't change its its spots. Yeah. So there could be a lot of burning rings of fire going on over there. What you get? <laughs> Wow. Uh, see what you did there. Sean St. George says the chat will never let me live that story down. That's fine. I like I still think it's a funny story just because I literally fucked the shit up. <laughs> you could dudes can say that all the time, but do you really mean it? Did you hear it? Was there like a like a like a No, sound? literally it's like it was one of those things where she just like, you know, just she we finished whatever and then she just she laid back on the pillow and then she scooched off and then I looked down and I was just like, "What the fuck is that?" Did she even know? <laughs> No, <laughs> like, she wow. had no idea. 
she, she would completely lost. She was she was lost in the moment, and then I just like, I, I'm not even gonna try to press this issue. I'm just gonna go wash this shit off, figuratively and literally. <laughs> all right, so it's nine twenty one. Do you want to go to alt tech? Yeah, we could do it alt tech. You were talking about like these, you know, chicks never changing their stripes. There's one in particular that always cracked me up. This was a friends with benefits situation. Okay, and then all of a sudden. I remember like she she was just doing one of those like, oh, remember when conversations? And then she starts telling, you know, it's like, oh, I remember when we did this. And I'm like, that wasn't me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh, oh, you yeah. remember when I took you into the, the, the room at the at, at school and then you know I, we, we pulled the, the paper over the thing and I gave you a BJ. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> Thank you for playing, but that wasn't me. <laughs> How many I mean, when a woman does that, she's literally wiener drunk. <laughs> exactly. Wow. wow. I was like, I hope that the me in your memory was good because that wasn't me. <laughs> My wow. All right. Let, let, let's hit the alt tech because I want to laugh at some of these videos. All right. We definitely we got some hilarious videos coming and I have some more nastiness that I can share of you of my own. Well, hang on. Um, well, let's, let's make sure we get all of the YouTube super chats. Before YouTube we... super chats are definitely a good thing. Uh, Max says, what about the Scotsman on Blake's cruise? Ben Dune and Phil McCavity. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> else knows what's the definition of tender love that's when two passengers on blake's cruise get a case of the hemorrhoids <laughs> sorry one ad one ad and now i'm a captain of a gay cruise hey look, takes, man. bro that's how dudes are man that Dog is takes. how it goes all right ladies and germs i'm gonna paste the links for the new tech sites where you can continue watching the stream they're going into the chat right now Right next to Phil McCavity and Ben Doon. <laughs> and if you guys want to watch some hilarious videos with us tonight, trust me, they are worth the trip. Links are going in right now. And it's going to be a really fun time. I think I've got 22 of these videos to share with you guys. Every single one of them is worth your time. Give those links a click. Come on over. The butts are better. The commentary is better. And it's completely uncensored. Yep. It's good times. All right. And I'm going to put on some Jeffrey Paul tunes for you while I go and empty my squirrel bladder because I've been holding it. And I'll see you in five minutes. All right.